Beloved uh, friends of Reformation, uh, you are welcome again to share the Word of God. Uh, this is uh, the Revival and Reformation work uh, where you are with uh, your brother Jackson, the Gijimana. We are going to learn the Word of God together and as it is the Word of God, uh, let's uh, start by prayer. Heavenly Father, we are thankful again to your protection. May your name be glorified. Lord, we are about to open the scripture. Guide us, give us your Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us unto the good way so that we be in a good position to make a good decision concerning this present life and the future life, the immortal one. Lord, Bless each and everyone. Send your agencies, the Holy Spirit, to quicken and to open our eyes and our souls to receive the good seeds of your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we said, this is the voice of Reformation. You are with your brother Jackson. As we said before, we are going to learn the lesson uh, entitled the, the Necessity of Decision Making. The necessity of decision making. This will be based in Psalms, in Psalms chapter 119, verse 113. It reads saying, I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. This is God who said that is in hateful uh, position against uh, the double mindedness, which is dangerous which caused many people in former time and in the present time to ruin their souls. Many people in crossed time failed to receive the truth because of this double-mindedness position they were in. This is dangerous. This position of being on left and right in the same time just today you are in this, tomorrow you are in that, which is contradicting. It's very bad. We have to be people holding one and clear position. This position is to be made by decision. This, when people were taught the truth by Jesus, many refused to accept it because of some pretension, because of some, this, some reasons, but these reasons were not reasons acceptable by God. How comes? In the book of John, when Jesus preached, many people believed in him. But the issue there was that they didn't decide to range themselves or to join themselves with him, and this caused them to, uh, to be crucified among those and believers who did wrong against Jesus. This is uh, John chapter 12, verse 42. It reads, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. This is a big issue. The synagogue of the time of Christ uh, were like the temples or churches of today, where leaders just lure uh, the members with contradicting or with constraining their consciences. They dictate what people must believe. They dictate people what they have to obey and what they have not to obey, but 
not according to the word of God. They don't leave the conscience, the liberty to decide for themselves. This is dangerous in itself, and this is dangerous in practice. This is the thing which needs to be changed, to be reformed by the people who listen and hears the voice of God. How comes? In the time of Jesus, as we read in the spirit of prophecy, in the book of great controversy, we find that uh, in the time of Christ also, many people did not uh, receive the truth because of the influence of the Pharisees who were the, the leaders of the people in the spiritual world or in the religious matter. They were their leaders, but as leaders, they were not to accept Jesus. Why? Why did they not receive Jesus? We found here is written in chapter 37, Great Controversy, page 595. It reads, When Christ came to speak the words of life, the common people heard him gladly. This was very good. Common people heard Christ teaching them gladly. This is one thing. And the many even of the priests and the rulers believed on him. This was very good. Among those who believed in Jesus to be Messiah were common people, were leaders and the priests, just rulers and the priests believed in Jesus. They didn't accept to prophesy that Christ was the Messiah. Why that? It is, it is written. But the chief of the priesthood and the leading men of the nation uh, were determined to condemn and repudiate his teachings. The teachings of Christ were repudiated by the people of his time. There is a luring people. Why? There is a reason given. Though they were buffeted in all their efforts to find accusation against him, they were looking for accusation against Jesus. This was one of the things they were plotting against him. This one. Uh, though they could but feel the influence of the divine power and wisdom attending his words, yet they encased themselves in a prejudice, they rejected the clearest evidence of his messiahship, lest they should be forced to become his disciples. They ignored him, they didn't accept him, though the testimonies, the tokens, of heaven favor well upon Jesus, but they refused to accept him as Messiah. These op opponents of Jesus were men whom the people had been taught from infants to reverence, to whose authority they had been accustomed implicit, implicitly to bow. They were taught to be obedient to them without question. Though they were to be told to do whatever bad thing, they were ready to do so because it was said by the priesthood. This was very bad. How is it, they asked, that our rulers and the land scribes do not believe on Jesus? They were asking themselves, why, how is it that our rulers and the land scribes do not believe in Jesus? Who did not the pious men receive him if he were the Christ? They were questioning themselves. If Jesus is Christ, if Jesus is Messiah, would our leaders, the pious people who, are, who, who have been in the matters of religion since their early ages, would they not accept Christ if, he was, if Jesus was the Christ? It was the influence of such teachers that lead the Jew Jewish nation to reject their Redeemer. Their influence caused the rejection of the Redeemer, and this caused their ruin. The spirit which actuated those priests and the rulers is still manifested by many who make a high profession of piety. Many people do, think, do, 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 do the same as the priests. They do prophesy to follow Jesus, and many people are actuated by the spirit which actuated the priests and the rulers. 
of the time of Christ. They refused to examine the testimony of the script the scriptures concerning the special truths for this time. There is a special truth for this time, but many many people do not accept to examine for themselves to know what is truth, where is truth. They don't accept. They point to their own numbers. The fact that they found their faith or their doctrine or their assurance is their numbers, their wealth. It means richness in the denomination and the popularity to be known, the renowned names they hold in the world. They look at that and look with contempt upon the advocates of truth as if few. That was the same argument against Jesus and his disciples. They are few. The advocates of the truth always are not many, but they are few. Many times you find them, they are poor. This is another argument which people do use against the followers and the advocates of the truth. The third one is that they are unpopular. They are not uh, popular at all. Having a faith that separates them from the world. This kind of faith or doctrine which leads people to be separated from the world, many people do not accept at all. They repudiate against the followers of Jesus and those actuated by his spirit are fought against because of their poverty, their fewness, how they are few and how they are unpopular. They are not known. This caused many people to despise the truth as it was in the time of Jesus. Christ foresaw that the undue assumption of authority indulged by the scribes and Pharisees would not assist with the dispersion of the Jews. Jesus knew this before. He knew that. He had a prophetic view of the work of exalting human authority to rule the conscience, with which has been so terrible a curse to the church in all ages. Among the curse of the church in all ages is to rule the consciences of people, leaders of different denominations, followers and members of different churches. Remember that when the dictates of conscience is done by any other person, this is contrary to the word of God. You must be uh, released from that bondage because the word of God cannot accept to let people remain in that bondage because conscience of a human being is a communication, a, a communication channel between God and his, his creation. The human being and the creator the created, the creation and the creator are to communicate through the conscience. No other person is allowed to intervene between the conscience and the creator. So, and his fearful denunciation of the scribes and the Pharisees and his warnings to the people not to follow these blind leaders were placed on record as an admonition to future generation. The future generation which we are in compared to that time of Jesus, the admonition against the scribes and the Pharisees is the admonition given to us who are at the end of the time. Many people do follow wrong theories, wrong doctrines, wrong creeds, ideas of human being instead of the ideas from the word of God because of the popularity of the churches, because of the number of the members, because of the riches they hold compared to the poverty, compared to the number which is very less and few, compared to the unpopularity of those advocates of the truth. But the truth always is advocated by those chosen by God and often the choice is made among those despised people. Then we found that in this same book of Great Controversy on page uh, uh, 460, it reads, Whatever may be their profession, it is only those who are world servers at heart that act from policy rather than principle in religious things. In religious things, if you act upon policy instead of working according to principle, you are servant of the world in your heart. Then this needs to change. We should choose the right because it is right. My dear friend, my dear followers, 
we have to choose the right because it is right and leave the consequences with God. We must choose the right because it is right and then leave the consequences with God. This is one of the principles which made the reformation in the early ages. To men of principles, faith and daring, the world is indebted for its greatest reformations. The reformation which was made in the world in the past, in the Middle Age, in the 15th and 16th centuries, this was made by the men of principles, men of faith, men who can dare to call sin by their right names. By such men, the work of reformation for this time must be carried out forward. This needs to be taken serious and decision making is needed by those who want to follow Jesus. With these words, we found that from Acts of the Apostles, this is the Bible, Acts of the Apostles, in chapter 12, verse 13, we found that many people believed on Jesus, but feared this point, which needs not to be the same point which deter people to follow Jesus. Chapter 5, verse 12, and 13. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among other people, and they were all with one accord in, so in Solomon's porch. And of the rest does no man join himself to them, but the people man man magnified them. Though the apostles did miracles, wonders, and many other acts, they were healing people, raising the dead, preaching the gospel, speaking in other language. In other, this was were miracles. Those unlearned guys of Galilee were preaching in different languages of the world, and that was made in the metropolitan in Palestine, and that was miracle miraculously made by people who have been in their early ages at the sea just as fishermen. But this was not, but many people feared to join themselves. They feared to join themselves with them because of their appearance, where they came from was not the place which was enviable. This one we found that many people failed to make decisions because of this point I want to read from the book named the uh, Minister of Healing. In the book of Minister of Healing, there is something we want to look at and uh, this needs to be serious also in our mind because we have not uh, to be, we have not to be uh, just like machines. In this book of Minister of Healing, page 495, paragraph 5, it reads, None should consent to be mere machines. No. Run by another man's mind. This is a big problem. There are people who don't think for themselves. There are people who don't act for themselves. There are people who are like machines. Some other people are thinking and they are there to execute. This is very bad. This is something which we have not to tolerate at all. God has given us ability to think and to act. God has given every human being the ability to think and to act. And it is by acting with carefulness, looking to him for wisdom, that you will become capable of bearing burdens. If you don't look to God for guidance, for the spirit, for the power, then you look for your leader, maybe he is misleading you, then you are following over there. It is fatal when you get at the end, you are told that you were not known by God himself and Jesus didn't know you. This is the big problem which many people will meet at, at last. Stand in your God-given personality, please. A decision maker is needed. Me decision makers are needed for themselves, not for others. Don't decide for any, but receive the word of God for yourself. Be no, uh, be no other person's shadow. Expect that the Lord will work in and by and through you. I think this is clear. Expect that the Lord will work 
in you and by you and through you to do whatever he wants you to do. Then, listen to the voice of God. There was a man who was a good listener and who could be a man who can just decide and who knew how to fight the good fight of faith. This was uh, in the time of Jesus. He made a decision and he was born, as we read from John chapter 9, verse 1, he, it is written, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. The man was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this, uh, hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. How this was manifested in him? We want to see how he decided. This was a good man who could decide despite the fear of the neighbors and despite the great eye of his, the, his, his rulers in the church and even the, his parents, which was fearful, didn't just advocate for Jesus. But this man who decided for himself knew what to do. What happened when Jesus met this person? When on verse 6, when he had uh, thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made the clay of the spito and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and he said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came sing. Verse 8. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this man that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, He started confessing Christ, among unbelievers and among these neighbors and among friends. He said, he answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash and I went and washed and I received the sight. Here we found that his testimony was not accepted by all of them. They took him to priest. When they took him to priest, we read from verse 17 that they say unto the blind man, Again, what sayest thou of him, that he has opened thine eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the eyes, the Jews, did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight, until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son, who you say that was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he, he now see, we know not. Or what, who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age. Ask him, he shall speak for himself. Why did the parents didn't confess Christ? The answer is on 22nd. There's the words speak his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was crossed, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. They didn't want to, to, prof to, to profess Christ. But out of this, the man continued to contend with these, uh, these Pharisees and the Jews. On verse 30, the man answered and said, because they asked him again and again, the man answered and said unto them, Why they herein is a marvelous thing, that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he has opened my mine eyes. Now we know that God here left not sinners, but if any man be a worship of God and does his will, him he here left. Since the world began, was it not hard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could not, uh, he could do nothing. 
they answered and said unto him, Thou was altogether born in his sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. It means out of the synagogue. Then when they said so, this man decided to be on the side of Jesus, on his side, but he refused, he refused to be uh, threatened by fear or being put outside of the synagogue because of this profession of that Jesus was Messiah. Here we found that many people do not decide for themselves and they fear to confess Christ for themselves. Then we read from the spirit of prophecy in the book of Acts of the Apostles, page 427. 427 is a man called Felix who didn't decide for himself at the proper time and he said, I may repent tomorrow or after tomorrow, but this didn't happen on 427. Let's read. It is written, A ray of light from heaven had been permitted to shine upon Felix, who was the king in the time of Paul. When Paul reasoned with him concerning righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, that was his heaven sent opportunity to see and to forsake his sins. But he said to the messenger of God, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. He had slighted his last offer of mercy. Never was he to receive another call from God. Don't delay. Just you can decide to follow Jesus at the proper time. The convenient time is today. The last verse is read from Hebrew chapter uh, 3 verse uh, 15. It's where we close from with this verse. Chapter 3 verse 15 it reads, While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation. Just don't harden your heart in this period, but if you hear the call from God to forsake your sins, to forsake your ways, don't be deterred by any other uh, provocation or any other outside influence, but obey the conscience which is the channel of God to you for the communication lets you hearken the message today and follow him and make a good decision according to the will of God. This is my humble prayer for you and for us all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You are my joy and glory.